Our next topic is reference frames. And you should understand that every measurement is made with respect to some reference frame or some frame of reference, as it is sometimes called. And by frame of reference, we simply mean point of view. And like most things, this is most easily understood through an example. So I'll talk about a person walking on a train to illustrate this example. Suppose we have a train car here, and it's on wheels on the tracks here. And suppose the train car is moving along the tracks at 25 meters per second, that way, to the right. And suppose there's a person on here, and he is moving inside the train car at 5 meters per second relative to the train car. So he's going for a walk or a little jog, moving at 5 meters per second relative to the train car, and the train car is moving at 25 meters per second relative to the ground. The question comes up, how fast is the person moving? Well, is he moving at 5 meters per second? He would certainly think so. But someone standing out here, watching him go by, they would see his motion combined with the motion of the train. This person would see the person going past relative to him at 30 meters per second. So the answer to the question, how fast is the person moving, depends on your frame of reference. If the frame of reference is the train, or you could say from the train's point of view, or with respect to the train, the person is moving at 5 meters per second. Another way you hear it phrased is relative to. The person is moving at 5 meters per second relative to the, to the train. If, the, if, you, if you have your frame of reference as the ground, or the railroad tracks, or the earth, the person is moving at 30 meters per second in that frame of reference. He's moving at 30 meters per second relative to the earth. And we could easily imagine other frames of reference as well. Think about this question. How fast are you moving right now? And you might think, well, that's pretty obvious. I'm still. I'm just sitting here in my chair perfectly still. And that may be true. You might be sitting there in your chair like this, just sitting there thinking about physics, watching the, watching the lecture on screen, and your chair is sitting still, but it's sitting still relative to the earth. The thing to keep in mind is that your chair is on the earth. And here's the earth, and the earth is spinning about its axis. And it's about 25,000 miles around the earth and it spins around once per day. That's the definition of a day, one complete rotation of the Earth. So it goes, if you're at the equator, you spin around 25,000 miles in 24 hours. So you're going about 1,000 miles per hour. If you're at a higher latitude, like say you're here in Atlanta, the, the circle that you make is a little smaller than the circle at the equator. So you might be moving at a little bit lesser speed. You still go around once per day in a smaller circle, but you're still moving hundreds of miles per hour. So you, you, you think maybe the center of the Earth is still. Could we consider that point to be stationary, a stationary frame of reference? And the answer is obviously no. Here's a picture of the solar system. You see the sun, the big ball glowing there in the middle, and the planets all going around the sun. And this is just an artist's rendition. Uh, this is not to scale, and the planets don't generally line up like you see them here. But you see um, over on the right side, you see Mercury, Venus, and Earth here with its moon. The entire Earth is moving around the sun, and it's moving at more than 18 miles per second in its orbit. So Earth itself is moving pretty fast. So you, to answer the question, how fast are you moving right now? Well, relative to the floor, you're probably sitting still. Relative to the center of the Earth, you might be moving at hundreds or maybe even a thousand miles per hour. Relative to the sun, you're moving at over 18 miles per second. And the sun is not still either. The sun is going around the center of the galaxy. And this is what we believe our galaxy looks like. Our galaxy is known as the Milky Way, and it has a, a big mass of stars there at the center. And um, it has these spiral arms. The galaxy is rotating, and in these spiral arms, in one of these spiral arms, about two-thirds of the way out from the center is where we think Earth is located. And it's called the Milky Way because from within the galaxy, when you look out, if you look out at the night sky and you're looking along the plane of the disk in, in some direction in the circle, you see a band of stars across the night sky that looks... Um, 
it looks milky. It's just this this thick band of many, many, many stars. You can't even make them out as individual stars without a telescope. But it, it appears to be this milky band across the sky. And that's how our galaxy got its name, the Milky Way. This is not a photo, understand. We've never been out this far from the galaxy and turned around and taken a picture. This is, again, an artist's conception. And all of these are NASA images, all the images you just saw. These are um, all in the public domain, U.S. government, and NASA is part of the government. U.S. government images are typically public domain, so I can use these right now without having to create my, create my own graphics, which is kind of nice. But the galaxy itself is rotating, and Earth is moving around the center of the galaxy at a, a little over 200 kilometers per second. And then the entire galaxy is also moving through space. Galaxies typically exist as part of a galactic cluster. And this is another NASA image. Some of the points of light in here appear to be stars, like that bright one there and that one there. Those are stars probably in the foreground. But all the other larger blobs or things that are disc-shaped, like this over here, or these elongated blobs or galaxies seen from the edge, these are galaxies. This is a picture of a galactic cluster. And all the galaxies are in motion. And our galaxy is moving at about a thousand kilometers per second relative to some other galaxies. The point I'm making is that you can't look at anything and say that it's absolutely still. Motion is always measured relative to something else. There's always some frame of reference that's involved in making a measurement of motion. Now in most cases the frame of reference is obvious. In most problems we do, for example, a car is accelerating out of a stoplight and we want to calculate the acceleration or the distance or the time or something like that. It's pretty obvious that the frame of reference is the ground or the earth and for practical purposes we assume that the earth is stationary and the speeds are measured relative to the earth. But you should understand that all motion is measured relative to something else. One example of motion that we're all familiar with is cars moving on a highway because we've all driven in cars and a car on the freeway typically goes about 60 miles an hour so let's suppose here you are moving along at 60 miles per hour and there's another car right beside you moving at 60 miles per hour how fast is car A moving with respect to car B so let's draw um, we'll draw car B back here behind this one moving along here in another lane so there's car B the yellow one so A is red and B is yellow whoops B is yellow and B is also car B is also zooming along at 60 miles per hour so the question is how fast is car A moving relative to car B if they're both moving side by side at 60 miles per hour the relative motion is zero and that's pretty easy to understand. You're driving along right beside someone, you turn your head and look at them. They're not moving forward or backward relative to you. Now it's a completely different case if the cars are aimed toward each other. If you have one car moving at 60 miles an hour and then another car over here, hopefully in a different lane, moving along at 60 miles an hour, When they pass each other, or whether they pass each other or not, just with this type of motion, they're moving toward each other at 60 miles an hour, you should realize that this gap in between them is closing at 120 miles per hour. The speed of car A relative to car B, or the speed of B relative to A, is 120 miles per hour. And because this is the reason, reason a head-on collision is so dangerous, it's because the relative velocities are so much higher in a head-on collision than other types of collision. If you're driving along at 60 miles an hour and another car is right beside you at 60 miles an hour and you bump each other, there's as long as you don't lose control, there's probably going to be very little damage and, and almost no chance of injury in that situation as long as you maintain control of the car and continue driving. But if you hit another car head-on and they're both going at 60 miles an hour, there's very little chance of surviving something like that. That is an extremely high-speed collision because of the relative motion of the two cars.